thank you for the opportunity. So I'm going to be talking about our, uh, some of our technology to create uh, anti fouling uh, actively anti fouling anti fouling uh, catheters for our implantable applications. So there are a lot of uh, indivalent catheter applications, transhepatic cephalus, glaucoma, and cardiac and neurological applications. Uh, and these things have pretty quite large uh, market size, ranging from two billions to uh, uh, seven billion dollars uh, in total market size, probably more for cardiac applications. But a lot of these indwelling implantable catheters have um, um, problem with uh, uh, occlusion-related um, uh, lifetime issues. So what we're trying to do is trying to uh, create devices that can actively combat these kind of biofouling issues. So, for example, hydrocephalus is a uh, it's about five hundred million dollars for the device market, and it's divided evenly about forty to sixty between shunt devices, which is the catheter, and the monitoring devices. And with the million people suffering from hydrocephalus in the U.S., and then 90,000 new shunt cases happening every year, it's a pretty substantial market. And um, there are multiple different players in this arena, uh, and there's several different um, technology that they tout, but the most important one that they are featuring is antimicrobial activities on the surface of these catheters. Uh, but the, the problem, as I'll mention to you, is the issues with uh, uh, biofouling that, uh, that significantly reduces lifetime of devices, and uh, we have the technologies to be able to combat these things in terms of both of uh, antimicrobial uh, anti functionality as well as clearing the obstru physical obstructions, uh, in addition to uh, being able to incorporate additional sensors for feedback uh, control of these kind of uh, devices. So hydrocephalus is a uh, neurological disorder that is commonly uh, uh, featured by large accumulation of cerebral spinal fluid in the brain. It is a very common congenital brain disorder affecting one to two uh, newborns every 1,000 uh, birth. And uh, it has a, a very, uh, the, the gold standard for treating this, device, this disease is to be able to implant a shunt system, which essentially divert excess fluid from the brain to the rest of the body. And uh, the problem is these devices have very high rate of failure, up to 40% uh, within the first year of implantation, and up to 85% uh, uh, after 10 years of implantation. And a lot of these failures can be attributed to these type of uh, ingrowth of tissue and cellular material that essentially block the, the inlet pores of the devices. Our solution is to come up with a, a smart self current catheters that have uh, that features uh, micromechanical devices. Um, these devices can be turned on using externally applied magnetic field uh, instead of having an, a passive removal with coatings or surface treatment. We have an, a way to actively remove these kind of uh, materials can be wireless driven, so no need for additional surgical operations. It can generate a large amount of forces to be able to uh, remove, detach these kind of uh, fouling materials. And we can also control the amplitude and frequency of the devices by uh, modulating the external field. Uh, and the way it works is pretty simple. Just imagine a compass. When you apply a magnetic field on a compass, it, it deflects. Uh, we, can, we can make thin film devices that can uh, rest uh, like this. Uh, and, and then the, when you apply magnetic field, it flex out of the plane, essentially. Uh, and then the devices can move in a diff multiple different uh, uh, mode modalities, use out of plane as well as torsional ways. So what we've done thus far is to demonstrate the efficacy of being able to move the different types of biomaterial, biofouling materials like the uh, microparticles, uh, inflammatory cells, and bacteria. The devices can generate up to 3,000 uh, hip dies per centimeter square, which is a substantial amount of uh, shear forces to be able to remove the attached uh, biomaterials. Bio and what we're doing right now is to integrate these thin film devices into catheters for in vivo evaluation. 